I appreciate uh, everyone gathering here today. I'm learning that you can't talk into these microphones very fast. And one of the first things I'd like to do is to commit to you my desire to improve the sound system in this auditorium. <laughs> but I do appreciate everyone's being here and expressing so many fine thoughts. What Dr. Jeffrey didn't do, and it shows his friendship, was tell you all the faults and mistakes he's also seen me make. But I think that's uh, clearly the value of friendship and clearly the value of a talented and special teacher. I want to thank members of the Board of Regents, Dr. Barber, everyone on the platform who represents uh, the city and the county, and all of you who have come, my fellow colleagues. This is a day that belongs to Western Kentucky University and the Zacharias family is happy to be a part of the celebration for a university that is strong and vigorous. And no president, certainly not this president, would request or expect or plan an inaugural occasion. And yet my family and I are deeply honored that the Board of Regents and the Inauguration Committee have put so much effort into this special event. My hope is that our gathering here today will symbolize the continuity that we have with Western's past and our commitment to strengthening every aspect of Western's future. The pleasure of having representatives from so many outstanding universities across the country seated here before us reminds us of the academic traditions that unite us in our pursuit of the excellence that Mr. Cole spoke of in teaching and research. Western feels a sense of kinship with the universities represented here today, and we appreciate the support that all of you have shown. I think Emblematic of that support and kinship is the fact that Dr. Curris of Murray State University, who is not listed on your program, has made a special effort to be here, even though in just a few minutes he has to leave and go to a major building dedication on his own building, that is, on his own campus. And I am appreciative of that effort. And I happen to know of that one. I don't happen to know of some of the others that I'm sure are of equal uh, commitment, show an equal commitment on your part. I'm delighted that all the presidents uh, uh, are present uh, on this occasion, and I appreciate your coming. During the past nine months, I've had an opportunity to renew my acquaintance with Western. And as I examine its history, I'm increasingly conscious of its previous president's dedications and accomplishments. And I want to take just a few minutes to recall a little of that past history, because it both shows where we have been and where I think we're headed. In the first report of the Board of Regents to the Governor and the General Assembly published in February 1908, there are numerous reminders of our history. Our current board will not be surprised to find that their predecessors are on record as requesting, quote, liberal appropriations from the state, close quote. The faculty and staff will recognize a notation that states, 
even with the present faculty, every member is doing almost double work, and many of our classes are too large. That was in 1908. The report concludes with a request that the annual appropriation be increased from $20,000 to $50,000 at the earliest possible moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this Board of Regents adopted on behalf of the Commonwealth a 50 million dollar budget this morning. During that same year, in 1908, when Western was expecting a, an enrollment of 1,000 students, Dr. H. H. Cherry, Western's founder and first president, observed something that would be very compatible with what Dean Jeffrey said. Every man's life would be a ray of educational intensity that reaches every part of our commonwealth, ennobling, enriching, and enlarging human action. Enriching its students has indeed been a, past of, a part of Western's past. And it was only fitting that a few years later that President Paul Garrett should carry on that tradition by dedicating the Kentucky Building in 1939 at the opening of this $221,000 facility, he observed, in years to come, boys and girls will here gain an understanding of other days, an interest in further study about Kentucky. Scholars will find here materials for research and bless the care which has preserved them from destruction. On July 4 of 1980, another chapter in President Garrett's dream will be completed when we dedicate the remodeled Kentucky Building. On October 17, 1955, Dr. Kelly Thompson became president of Western after having served as acting president for a few months and continued the march of this university toward a new era. His dedication to this university is well known to all of you. You can understand his philosophy from these words. I believe that Western is a heritage to us from innumerable benefactors of the past. We must never squander this legacy. The bricks and mortar and the steel are, of course, a meaningful part but the real Western is and must remain in the hearts and the minds of the faculty and staff, the students, the alumni, and all others who might in any way help shape Western's destiny. For it is through the spiritual and the mental that Western can be an ever-expanding influence in the lives of all who are and will be beneficiaries. The university today has taken its shape from the combined efforts of people unknown to many of us. And President Downing paid tribute to them in 1974 when he told the faculty and staff, in committing ourselves to improving the quality of every program, every service in this university, I challenge each of us not to be satisfied with anything less than the best we can offer. It is not expected, nor is it necessary, that we be of one mind. However, we must have unity of purpose and an attitude of cooperation as constructive, informed participants in the university community. We must renew our commitment to professionalism as we accept the responsibility of doing our jobs with renewed standards of excellence. Last year, President Minton led the university Research process. Though he was not directing the process, he was minding the store while the search went on. I appreciate him most for his solid integrity 
and professionalism in helping me make a transition to this campus. And I don't suppose the story will ever be known about how important he was to me and the kind of dedication that he showed to this university. Well, this is a panoramic view of Western's march toward new plateaus, and it should give us confidence about tomorrow's issues. The development of higher education in America has always faced major challenges. Aside from the obvious issues of enrollment and finance, there's the equally critical issue of commitment and involvement of, by every member of the faculty, staff, and administration in the university's mission. At the time our students need us the most, there is a growing tendency at some universities for people to feel detached and to look for ways to isolate themselves from the difficult decisions that will have to be made on campuses across the nation. If Western is to continue its history of strengthening its academic programs and improving its administrative procedures, the best minds on this campus will have to become directly involved in the day-to-day -day process of teaching and planning Western's future. I think it's probably indicative of how well Dr. Jeffrey knows me that he quoted Albert Einstein, because I have one too. <laughs> Albert Einstein wrote several years ago what is clearly my favorite of all quotations when he said, we exist for our fellow men. In the first place, those upon whose smiles and welfare all our happiness depends. And next, for all those unknown to us personally, but to whose destiny we are bound by the tie of sympathy, a hundred times every day, I remind myself that my inner and outer life depend on the labor of other men, living and dead, and that I must exert myself in order to give in the same measure as I have received and am still receiving. The tone of that statement reminds me of our need to recognize why this or any university exists. It exists for the transfer of information, artistic expression, and encouraging the best in human performance. We, too, must exert ourselves in order to give in the same measure as we have received and are still receiving from those who have tied their destinies with Western Kentucky University. Thank you.
standing for the benediction. Now may the peace, joy, and love of God keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.
each of you all for coming.